Hi, I'm Diana Ferris, and I work for Amico. I'm the Director of Educational Outreach, and I teach workshops around the country. And I'm uh, speaking to you from my home studio today. And along I'm with my. Oops, I'm sorry. And I'm Kathy Skaggs. I'm in my studio in Port Florida, and I'm a retired art teacher. I spent 30 years in the classroom. And my job with Amico is to show you how to incorporate clay into your classroom. And today we're going to be showing you how to make these Art Deco tile designs using both opaque and translucent glaze colors and layering them on top of each other. And Kathy's going to go ahead and do a demonstration. So to get started today, what we're going to be using is we're going to be using some teacher's palette black and some other teacher palette light glazes that Diana's going to tell you about later. So we'll move those out of the way. And you'll also need a magic marker, a pencil, and a ballpoint pen, and I have a piece of tracing paper. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take the tracing paper, we're gonna fold it in half, we're gonna take the Sharpie marker and we're gonna draw a design onto, onto the tracing paper. So we'll put our design on here. And you're drawing just half of a design because of course we've got it folded, we want the center of the design to be there because kids always have a hard time with symmetry. So we're gonna kind of do symmetry cheating. So we're gonna go in here, we're gonna draw our design. And the other thing is you wanna keep it fairly simple at this point, because if you wanna add detail, you can do it, but you wanna do it later. It's easier to do it later than in the beginning. So we're gonna go in here, draw our design. So once you have your design drawn, you're gonna open it. You can, you've got it, half of it done. So without opening it up, just leave it closed like this. So we're gonna flip it over and you can see the other side. Now, if you don't have tracing paper, you need to know that you can also use copy paper and that works great. So don't feel like you have to go buy something special for your classroom because you don't need to. You can use copy paper and it'll work the same way. So we're going to go in here, we're going to flip it, and we're going to draw the other side. Now we're using Art Deco to, um, as our inspiration, Art Deco tiles, but you could do anything. You don't do something floral, it, anything that's going to create some symmetry. If you're use, working with younger kids, it can be shapes. It does not have to be, you know, this subject matter. The whole idea is you want to just talk about symmetry and how easy you can make that. So then the next step is you want to open it up and check your design. At this point, you could add some other things in. We're going to leave it just like this for now. But now what we want to do is we want to now take it and put it onto a tile. So there's a number of ways that you can do that. And so let me grab a tile here. Um, you don't want to use carbon paper. I've tried carbon paper in the past thinking I could make that a little easier for people, but carbon paper is, has some oil in it and it will resist the glazes. So to make a tracing paper, you want to flip it over. Now, you'll notice that I did this didn't do it in pencil or pen, I did it in a Sharpie marker. And the reason is I can see it through both sides real well, it gives me a nice bold line, but mostly to transfer my design, I'm gonna have to scribble on the back. So if I had drawn this with pencil first and scribbled on the back, the kids will not even see the lines and makes it too difficult for them. So what you wanna do is go in here and they need to scribble on all their lines basically deposit and graphite on there to make a transfer paper. So what you wanna do is do that on every single line, scribble everywhere. Once you've done that, you're gonna take 
the drawing and you're put it on your tile and you're going to you need to tape it in place with a couple of points now now you're going to switch to a ballpoint pen why because this has a nice hard tip that'll transfer your design it's uh you use a pencil if that's what the kids have i mean don't be limited by this and a red ballpoint pen really works great because you can see where you draw the lines so what you're going to do now is you're going to take your pen and you're going to trace over every line again this can also be done with pencil if that's what you have in the classroom once you've gone over every line you're going to pull this up and you'll barely see barely see a the lines on there now if i can see them here it's a little hard to see on the camera so if you wanted to too you could have the kids go over this with a pencil so if you want to be able to see that now i know this is kind of unnerving because you're like i'm going to fire this i don't want to see those lines well you're not going to see those lines because pencil marks burn out in the kiln so it's a great way to plan on bisque i can see my trace lines although you can't on the camera i can see where to do them and the kids will see that okay so once i've traced over all my lines we'll go over the rest of them Okay. Again, I can see these other ones, so I'm not going to trace over them. I'm going to remove my tracing, and I am going to grab my little squirt bottle. So this is an applicator. That's what they call it. You don't have to fill it with underglaze. You can fill it with whatever you want. And um, these have a little narrow metal piece here and they tend to sometimes the glaze or underglaze or whatever you're using will get clogged in there. What you need to do is go to a florist or go to Amazon and get a nice long pen because you can keep that in this and it'll keep that from stopping up and you never have to wash those out. So we're going to take out, we're going to shake the material down to the tip and now we're gonna go in here and we're gonna trace over all our lines. Now, if you have to squirt, and now I'm making contact with the tile, it's easiest if you drag away from yourself. So when you do it with the kids, if they push, that's gonna be not give them as good an effect. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just keep turning the tile so I can drag it toward myself. You do have to kind of talk to the kids a little bit because it's not a magic marker and some of them will get a little disturbed by these little heavy uh, deposits of underglaze or glaze at the beginning or end line. But what you're looking for is line quality. If they miss their mark on their outline, no problem. Remember the pencil line burns off, so it's no big deal. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna finish outlining all of our design. So let me bring in my other tile. Whoop, fast forward. So what I've done here is I've finished all my outlining. I have put the teacher's palette, like Diane's gonna explain exactly what I use, but I've squirted that on and I've put it outside to dry. And this works good because once you've got this on, this is a nice hard finish that won't rub off. And you could get to this point with the kids and then stop the project. And when you see them again, then they'll be ready to paint. So this is a great stopping point. So uh, Diana, you want to tell them what we've used? Yes, here we are. I'm going to show you the PowerPoint that will show you how to get from to this point with the presentation. And let's see how to get it back from the beginning. Uh, this PowerPoint is going to be available to you after this uh, presentation. You can also download it from the Amica website where the lesson plan is. 
and it's all so available in Keynote. So this is what it looks like. We've got some examples on the cover of symmetrical art deco tile designs to help inspire your students. And then these are the supplies that Kathy showed you that you will need to have on hand. And then of course, step-by-step -step images of the presentation. And here the design was being copied onto the second side, finished connecting the lines with the marker and using a soft pencil to rub over the lines to be able to transfer it onto the tile. And here we are making sure you put the pencil side down onto the tile before using the ballpoint pen to transfer the design. And we've got the pencil image here. And then of course the outlining with the black glaze in the applicator. And uh, the glazes we're using for this project are the teacher's palette light glazes that are going to go over the black outline. Uh, the black outline is the teacher's palette which is a more opaque color. So this is like using watercolors over acrylic lines. We're only using the opaque teacher's palette for the outline at the first step. And then everything else that we're gonna layer on top of it is gonna be the translucent teacher's palette light colors so that you can see the outline after they're fired. You can also see the colors through each other when they're applied thinly. These are great glazes for also using over texture, uh, like this example here, because they enhance the texture rather than obliterate it, like a lot of the opaque glazes. So um, another way uh, you can see how the teacher's palette lights show the underglaze colors through them. We've got underglaze printed on here. And with the uh, one coat example that I'm pointing at here, that's just one heavy coat of the teacher's palette light color. And you can see how well you, the underglaze shows from underneath it. If you go ahead and follow the instructions on the jar for three coats, you'll not see quite as much, but you can still see the bold lines. For the most translucent effect, you can actually mix the teacher's palette light colors with clear glaze and we recommend either the Amico F10 or the LG10 clear. They're both compatible with them. And uh, here's an example that shows all the steps that we're doing in this project. So the first one up here on the top left is just outlining directly onto the bisque tile, the white tile background with the black teacher's palette. And after it's dry, uh, Kathy's going to show you how to cover the whole surface with a light colored teacher's palette light glaze and then build the layers of color on top. So here you can see some of the translucency where the green is thin and you can see the yellow through it. And then of course adding detail on top of that. And uh, Kathy's going to talk to you a little bit about the co color wheel here. Okay, so when you get to this point, you have to really think about where you're going to go with your colors. You're going to start with something light and go to something dark. So let me um, go back to my, what I'm doing here. So I'm going to go back to what my other screen. So we're going to turn off the PowerPoint. Okay, and we are going to, let's go to, let's go look at the, what we've been working on. Okay, so I've got my teacher's palette light glazes. They are awesome because they're translucent. And just like the label shows you, they can go, they vary on texture. And they're really great for going over these bold lines, dark lines that we've already put on here. So color-wise, you need to think about it kind of in a watercolor kind of way. So we're going to start with a yellow, and we want to walk around the color wheel. So we're going to have to go one way or the other. So we're going to go from the yellows to the chartreuse green, to a darker green, to a light blue, and then darker blue. The great thing with teacher's palettes is they never get muddy. 
You don't, it's not like when you use paints where if you complement, you'll get this ugly color. If you overlap the colors, they're always jewel-like and they are, all, are always successful. That's why when you use it with younger kids, they're great because they will uh, mix well. So I'm gonna start the yellow. So I'm gonna use a, a big wide brush and what I'm gonna do is go over the whole design. And the reason that I wanna do that is I wanna make sure everything is glazed in the end. And instead of doing a paint by number, where you just you paint one part in and another part in, and you know, that's kind of makes it difficult. It's never really pretty with glazes because if you don't deposit enough glaze, it's just, it isn't pretty when it comes out of the kiln. So this way, kids know and you know that they've painted everything, but you can still see the bold lines. Now, you could stop at this point, but there's really no reason to. You can continue to paint. So if you're doing it in a class session and the kids have already um, put one color on, now they can go ahead and go with another. Now this, although looks very similar in the raw form on here, you can, there's a slight difference. This is the chartreuse green over the yellow. This is, the actual name is Peridot. So we're gonna put a little Peridot over some of these green parts. Now, when I put this on, you don't see much of a difference because the colors value-wise are pretty close, but you will see it in the final form. Now, you'll notice I'm not being real picky about getting in the lines because I know that these bold lines are gonna come through. So if I just put a swash of color on there, those bold lines, those outlines are gonna show through and I don't have to worry about getting in those lines exactly. So let's switch to now to uh, emerald, which is a dark, dark green. You'll see a good contrast here. Now I can come in here and I can just paint over. Now this looks kind of watercolory, Beret, it's fine, it doesn't matter. So we're gonna go in here, we're gonna paint. And the other thing that's great about the teacher's palette is they're very forgiving on the amount that you use. You could put one coat and get color, or you can overlap them without any problem. So we're gonna go in here. And again, I'm not worried about staying in the line. Oop, wanna get in there a little better. Don't worry about staying in the lines because that line is going to, when it's fired, Diana is going to show you an awesome example. And you're going to notice that you see those designs through there. Now, the other thing that you may notice, again, if I overlap or brush strokey, that's fine with me because I want that kind of loose look. Now, you'll notice in this possibly that I did add other shapes when I outlined, and that is an op that you can do. So now I'm going to go, and this one is a lighter blue, it's Zircon, and now I can come in here and I can do my flowers. Now, if this is a little difficult to paint and I get a little into the green, it's a problem because the colors mix so well. So I'm going to go in here, I've got kind of a light and dark application, that's okay. So I'm going to go in there, add a little blue, and then I'm going to go even darker with sapphire. This is a very dark blue-green. And now I can come in here and I can add some of these shapes that I put in earlier when I was tracing. One of them I put in because I actually made a mistake. So if you make a mistake on this side, you make the reverse mistake on that side. You don't start again. You just kind of use that saying. So you can come in here and you can spend as much time painting on this as you want. I'm going on to it a little bit loose, but with school, with kids, that's hard for them. So what you might want to do is just spend some time really taking your time and painting it in. There is no right or wrong. So if you have younger kids, they're gonna have a hard time staying in those lines. So as long as they get it approximately, it's gonna work great. So Diana, you wanna show them some finished examples? Absolutely. So I'm gonna go back to the presentation here. 
and quickly go through the rest of the examples, what Kathy just showed you, the steps to review, layering the different colors. So in our uh, lesson plan that's on our website, you'll see slightly different color choices, but the outcome is similar. This is another example here that shows us a finished fired project with uh, the same techniques, just different color choices as well. So with these Teacher's Palette and Teacher's Palette light glazes, we recommend firing them to cone 05. If you're firing normally to cone 06, they'll also be fine at that firing temperature as well. And I'm gonna show you a few other examples. Here's an example with similar color choices. Sorry, we don't have the example Kathy just showed you, but we're both working from home right now. Um, this uses the black outline using the smaller tip, which is called 18 gauge. Here's another example using thicker outline with the 16 gauge. So that's kind of a decision you'd need to make. And instead of using a black outline here, we used some bold opaque colors from the teacher's palette line. Uh, like the orange and the green. Just uh, the black is easier for, usually for the kids to work with because they don't have to think about which colors look good on top. So here's some, those are the examples. Wanted to show you a couple of variations as well that you can do with this project. If you're doing, uh, if you're not a low fire cone 0506 firing studio, uh, you can do the same technique using the Amico Celadon glazes that fire to cone 5-6, which is mid-range, also known as high fire. And you can also do this technique on a three-dimensional surface where uh, here I started out with the black outline and then built up the layers of color on top. So, that looks great, Diana. I, I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as Diana and I did making it. So go out and glaze.